Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and today I'm reviewing a beautifully specced Porsche 911 Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet with a seven speed manual transmission. And let me tell you, anytime I'm able to review a manual trans car, I'm just genuinely excited. So I'll be covering all of the details for the interior, exterior, and also taking this thing for a quick drive. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this review of the Porsche 911 Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet. Alright, so let's get started with the review by first thanking Porsche of downtown LA for giving me access to this gorgeous 911 GTS today. If you happen to be interested in a Porsche product, make sure you give them a call. I've left their information in the description below. Now let's get started with the review by briefly touching upon the GTS trim level and its pricing. And it didn't occur to me that the GTS was such a pricey car, especially in this configuration. The Cabriolet and the Targa represent the most expensive non-GT or non-turbo badge 911 starting at a base price of $162,000. But then I thought to myself, wait a minute, why am I surprised here? Because the GTS has never been about the cheapest 911. It's always been a value proposition because you get a bunch of stuff, stuff quote unquote performance features in the GTS as standard equipment that you would have to pay extra for in the lower trim levels. All right, so speaking of some of those standard features, let's start it off with the sport design aero kit. So on the front, you get a more aggressive diffuser. On the back, it's a little sportier around the diffuser. And of course, you get blacked out side rockers. Speaking of blacked out, there are several trim pieces on the GTS that do get the blackout treatment, most notably around the headlights and the tail lights are tinted a darker shade, which look absolutely fantastic on this lighter color white paint. Now, in addition to that, this car is optioned with the black stripes. This is actually the first 992-911 I've seen with any color stripes, and I think it looks pretty cool. And considering that this is a GTS, it kind of makes us stand out a little bit more. In addition to that, you also get the center locking wheels, which are always a cool form and functional feature. But overall, I think the GTS does a good job of kind of differentiating itself with a sport design kit as standard and some of the other things that give it that unique GTS touch. So it maintains a clean and sporty look and therefore I think it looks fantastic. All right, so now I'm on the interior and I wanted to show you guys how the convertible top operates and some of its characteristics. But before that, I mentioned this car does have the optional stripes. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that they continue onto the cloth top of the convertible. This is a really nice touch, great attention to detail from Porsche. And I think it looks really cool. Now, as far as the convertible top, how does it operate? There are two buttons here right underneath the seven speed manual. So you push, the one here on the left or you pull it up and the convertible top will start the retraction process and retracting it and closing it takes about 13 seconds and you can do it traveling up to 31 miles an hour so here come the windows let me roll them down again now this is actually a very fast convertible top i think the only one that's a little faster is the amg gtr roadsters convertible uh, or convertible top and then on par with the new sl55 that i reviewed uh, basically a couple of weeks ago at this point but one uh, but not one but two shortcomings of this convertible top or at least characteristics of it is uh, this car does not have air scarf so there isn't that an air scarf is the term for mercedes on a uh, i guess a device that blows hot air on the back of your neck uh, so that's one thing and another thing and i ding this 
for a lot of convertible cars, most of them don't have it, is uh, the top cannot be operated from outside the car. Now in the new SL and in a couple other BMWs I've driven, you can lower and close the top using the key fob. So you can just hold it while you're walking away and your convertible top will close. You don't have to do anything from inside the car. Now one other thing I forgot, this does have a standard windscreen built into it. There's a button right here, right underneath the convertible top operation buttons and it just raises and it's a fantastic feature because other cars you got to put them in manually and this one is just built in. You just push a button, automatically deploys. So a really nice convertible top. Now let's switch gears and talk more about the performance upgrades in the GTS starting off with the engine. All right, so speaking of the performance upgrades, let's start it off with the engines. So this is a familiar three liter twin turbocharged boxer six cylinder, and it's making 473 horsepower with 420 pounds feet of torque. It's got a red line of 7,500 RPM, and it's made it to, of course, in this example, a fantastic seven speed manual. But of course you can opt for an eight speed PDK as well. And it's putting power down to all four wheels in this configuration. You can also get these with a rear wheel drive configuration as well. Now, if you're keeping score, this represents a 30 horsepower bump when you're going from Carrera S to Carrera GTS. Uh, and uh, it's 23 horsepower in uh, addition to what you got in the 991 generation of the GTS. Now, all of this equates to a 0 to 60 time of 3.4 seconds with the PDK and 4.1 seconds with the manual. So it's several ticks slower, and all of this is according to Porsche. But I almost feel like this is a drastically, drastically underrated number of that 4.1 seconds 0 to 60 time. We'll put that to the test during the driving portion of the review. But beyond that, Porsche is basically turning up the boost to give you that additional 30 horsepower. Now, one additional benefit you get with the manual transmission, besides just the fun factor, is that it weighs about 100 pounds less equal cars with a 8-speed PDK. But putting all of that aside, this thing also comes with a standard sport exhaust system. So I'll take you around back so you can take a listen to what this thing sounds like. Alright, so now let's talk about the suspension bits in the GTS and this is derived from the 911 Turbo. They take it and they give it a unique tune. PASM is a PASM Sport which gives it 10 millimeters lower ride height than the non-sport version of it. And PASM, if you're not familiar with, this is Porsche's dampening system. It allows you to stiffen or soften your ride uh, depending on your driving conditions. Now in addition to that, you do get a mechanical limited slip differential Porsche torque vectoring and dynamic engine mounts. One additional item that this specific uh, car has today is PDCC, which is Porsche's dynamic chassis control system. This is the active roll bar system from Porsche. Now this also requires you to get rear wheel steering, which is immensely helpful to kind of extend or shorten the wheelbase depending on driving conditions. This is very helpful when you're trying to make three point turns or where you're trying to have a, a larger turn radius in narrow areas and for high speed stability. Now switching to the wheels, these are the center locks from the 911 Turbo. They're staggered 20 by eight and a half up front and 21 by 11 and a half in the rear. Now one thing I do have to admit, the prior version of the center locks from the 991 generation, I did think that those are a little better looking, a little bit more intricate, but these are very simple and clean. So inside the wheel barrels, you also have the brakes from the 911 Turbo. They're massive, 16 inches up front being bitten onto by a six piston brake caliper, 
painted in red, of course, and in the rear, 15 inches with a four piston monoblock caliper. Now the tires that wrap the wheels are 245s up front and 305s in the rear. So with those things out of the way, now let's switch topics and talk about practicality. Let's jump onto the interior and then we'll go for a quick drive. All right, so now the interior of the GTS, and I'm gonna start off with the overall size and comfort of this interior. And I've left the top up on purpose to give you a perspective of sizing in here. Uh, I'm 5'11", and I fit in here just fine, no issues. Somebody several inches taller than me will be able to sit in here with their top up. Somebody my height will be able to put a helmet on as well, just in case you were gonna track your GTS uh, or your convertible GTS. But nonetheless, uh, just for perspective sake there, the overall size in here is fantastic. I love the size of 911s on the interior. These and the new generations of the Corvette, the C8, I really like it. It's a proper sports car interior and it, uh, ad adjust your perspective because this is still a modern interior and modern interiors are bigger than uh, older 911s or older generation sports cars period but I think this maintains a good size given the period centric timeline of when this car is being built. Uh, now, as far as the seat in the GTS, you get the four-way standard seat, the four-way sports seats as standard, but this car has the 18 ways. This is a loaded, loaded up car. It has the 18-way seats, the front lift, and all of these other wonderful things, the PDCC that I talked about. So uh, the 18-way seats are fantastic. I've sat in many 18-way seats in many different Porsche products and they're fantastic in all of them. It's no different here. It's very comfortable. The thing I love about them is all the buttons are here on the side. I don't have to fiddle with the infotainment screen to adjust my bolsters or my thigh bolsters and all, any of that stuff. So it's a very comfortable seat. It is still sporty. The seats are do have an underlying hint of stiffness or uh, yeah, stiffness is the right word. Uh, it, don't expect like some super cushiony seat just because the, the, it's the most expensive 18-way seat, but still comfortable and daily drivable. Now, the interior design, uh, just as a precursor or pre-note to the design, this has the upgraded interior leather package. It's the Carmine red stitching and the center tachometer and um, sport chrono, and it looks fantastic this is a great spec whoever put this thing together maybe minus some of the other options and stuff but the interior leather and the exterior color with the stripes and the interior carmine red gives a fantastic balance to the white exterior paint if this was just an all black interior i would say it needs a little bit of flair but the deviated stitching with some of the other red accents or the carmine red accents really give it a nice touch and overall the 992 this is the third 992 i've driven or reviewed and my opinion of it doesn't change it's fantastic again it's a great size the design is very simple it's very clean and i really like the way porsche integrates the uh, gauge cluster here with the center dash it's not like some sticking out screen like you've got in some of the other cars nowadays with larger infotainment screens and whatnot so now switching on over into infotainment and the technology so you've got three screens in here two of them are a part of the gauge cluster and it's the same issue i'm not going to beat on it too much but uh, you can't see all of the gauges it's the five pod gauge cluster that you expect in a 911 but the outer gauges are basically not visible but anyway, I'm not going to touch more on that. A lot of people know about that, and I'm not sure how what Porsche is going to do about it. But next, let me talk about the infotainment system because there's a big change in here. For the 2022 model year, Porsche has changed the software, the PCM, and they've simplified it. And I can definitely tell you it is much, much simpler than the prior version of a PCM. Everything is super, super easy. It's just this main screen, and it's all just these little widget buttons that you can use very easy to read very easy to understand if you want your vehicle settings the vehicle button is right there media navigation everything is laid out you don't have to mess with anything else everything is just right here kind of like a smartphone layout where you just click on an app boom you're there 
Now the nice thing about it, just like your smartphone, you have the ability to rearrange the icons so you can put things that you use most frequently at the top of the menu or to the top left of the menu. Kind of like reading a book, you read from the top left. Uh, so that's always fantastic, but otherwise the graphics are still fantastic. Not, they not that they weren't in the prior generation, they continue on into this version of PCM. It's a fantastic infotainment system and it's now even better because it's simpler. Now two things before going onto the drive because that's what I really want to do, but uh, the infotainment system, just in case you didn't like the simplified new system and you wanted to run Apple CarPlay, you can do that wirelessly and now Porsche has also added Android Auto which was missing previously but it's wired so if you want to use android auto you got to plug in your phone uh, or just get an apple device if you want to run wireless uh, apple carplay now the other thing is as a part of the gts trim level you get reduced insulation in here so it is supposed to be louder and i'll give you a perspective of that during the drive but i'm going to drive it top down uh, but nonetheless i'll give i'll still try and give you some uh, perspective of that Otherwise, uh, Sport Chrono is also standard, and that's pretty much it on the interior. This is a wonderful, wonderful interior. Nicely spec, very, very high spec. I didn't do all the math, but I would say this car is probably close to like $200,000, uh, right around the 180, 190 range. Uh, so yeah, wonderful, wonderful spec, very nice interior as well. So with that out of the way, now let's go to the driving portion and see what this thing feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review. And as always, this is what the key looks like. Very cool color matched key, gives it a nice flair, even though it's still plastic. Maybe in the next gen, you get a metal key in the 911, who knows? Now, uh, visibility is fantastic in all 911s. You definitely get the fishbowl style uh, visibility in every direction. Uh, and this does have a fantastic 360 degree camera. It works very, very nicely. Uh, blind spot monitoring, so no safety issues. So with that, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a drive. Clutch in. Starts up with a nice Porsche rumble. A little bit of raspiness coming in through the exhaust and I'm going to do this review top down of course I've got the windscreen up so hopefully it uh, muffles a little a little bit of the wind noise and you guys can hear me properly so let's go ahead and go for a quick drive release parking brake saying press park pedal uh, brake pedal so let's go all right so as I'm setting off here let me talk to you about the shifter and the clutch the clutch pedal is very, very easy to use, very smooth, nice engagement feel. So it's a really nice clutch pedal. I got used to it immediately, I jumped in. And the shifter is actually 10 millimeters shorter. So this is not a short shifter, but the shifter itself is shorter. So it's a little stubby thing and it looks pretty cool. And Porsche says that it's supposed to help you shift faster, but not really sure if it does. Anyways, so that's that. The shifter and the clutch feel very nicely. I'll give you a little bit more info as we are driving here. But let's go ahead and put it in Sport Plus. I mean in Sport because that's the best mode or the mode that I like the most. And let's see what this got. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Woo! The speed is sensational. This is definitely not a 4.1 second zero to 60 car. No way. Oh my goodness. The exhaust note is fantastic. Yes, baby. Woo! Yeah. Great experience in here with the exhaust. Really nice. All right, let's see. Give it some more here. Oh, brutally fast. Woo! No way. No way, 4.1 seconds. There's not a chance in hell that this is a 0 to 60 in 4.1 second car. No way. No way. All right, so with that out of the way now, so it puts a smile on your face. Okay, so. Um, let me describe to you the oral experience. Uh, 
right around three and four thousand rpm you start hearing the turbo spool and it delivers a really nice exhaust note as well once you're in the higher rpm there's a little bit of rasp right at the top of the rpm band and i prefer rasp i like rasp so it's a really nice sounding exhaust uh, the one thing about it is uh, regarding the power delivery it feels the same as what i felt in the 4s that i drove you get that gut punch right around 4,000. Here it comes. Oh, yes. There it is. And once that gut punch is delivered, you are just going at an unbelievable pace. Really, really fast car. And the rev match downshifts are very good as well. Really nice. So, it's a very very fast car all right let me tell you about the rest of it now go back into comfort mode or normal mode so the shifter is very good when you're driving fast as well good engagement uh, the rev match downshifts are very good as well in sport mode so it gives you a nice driving experience that manual transmission uh, experience is definitely there and it's great now the brake is my kind of brake a lot of bite right at the top of the pedal very sensitive a lot of power uh, more than adequate i couldn't i wouldn't really see a need for the carbon ceramics this gives you a lot of braking power now the rest of it the suspension and the steering so starting off with the steering uh, it's Porsche steering rack, electric uh, steering rack, and it feels fantastic. Uh, there is a, a decent amount of weight in comfort mode. It's a nice feel. It doesn't feel like it's too overly weighted, where it becomes a task to basically turn your steering wheel. So it's a really nice feel. As I'm here at a little bit of a hill, there is uh, a hill prevention or rollback mode that will just hold the gear for you or, or apply the brakes so you don't roll back and hit anybody so that's always a good feature in a manual transmission car but the suspension is actually where the magic is happening in this GTS uh, the PASM Sport is tuned very nicely and what I mean by that is it does a fantastic job in normal mode disguising the sporty underpinnings of this car and it's very sporty in sport and in sport plus it gets properly stiff and uh, driving it here in the city um, i didn't get a chance to take it out in the uh, in the highway i mean uh, in mountain roads uh, because this is obviously a dealer car but uh, in sport mode uh, and sport plus mode it gives you proper sports car feel in the suspension and then when you put it in normal mode, it just feels like a, something that you can commute on a daily basis. Now, I have to be really honest here. A lot of the um, comfort is built into the seat. I can definitely feel the seat doing a lot of that disguising of the stiffness and the sportiness, but there's definitely underpinnings in normal mode. You're, def you're not gonna feel like you're driving a slush mobile in uh, normal mode with your 911 GTS. So it's still properly engaging to drive even in comfort mode. And one other observation, uh, this is definitely softer than the 991.1 and 991.2 911s that I drove, 911 GTSs that I drove. So this cab is definitely friendly for uh, a daily commuter or uh, something that you can drive uh, for long periods of time, I would not foresee any issues with that in this GTS. So, uh, is this a good car? I think this is a fantastic car. And it uh, delivers a wonderful uh, sports car experience uh, with the convertible top down. Uh, of course, the exhaust note is good with a manual transmission. I would get this car with a manual, it's fantastic. And along with that comes the entire package of a Porsche product as a car. The whole 
fit and the finish, the quality, the way things work together, the functionality of the whole car, it's just top notch, no different here in the 911. I find that to be the same in most Porsche products that I drive. So this is a fantastic car. With all of that out of the way, I think I'm just gonna end it here. If you've got any other questions, make sure you leave me a comment down below or just send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.